Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Hannah Crapone. I'm the content marketing manager here at Certiport. We're so happy to have you joining us for our final Adobe Certified Professional Academy webinar this afternoon. Please note that the session is being recorded. So everyone is currently on mute. If you have questions that you would like to ask our panelists or our presenters, please feel free to drop those into the chat or the Q&A feature, and we'll make sure to address those uh, before we wrap up our presentation today. Now, today we're having a very special panel discussion uh, with two of our Adobe US national champions. And our first panelist is Akil Dunkley. Akil found his passion for the arts at 15 years old and has been creating ever since. He migrated to West Palm Beach, Florida from Jamaica when he was 16. After high school, he moved to Atlanta, Georgia to pursue a BFA degree at the Savannah College of Art and Design. While in college, he became more motivated to learn multiple forms of visual communication, and he discovered his love for lighting through photography, worked at an art gallery assistant for a few years, and taught himself 3D digital software programs. After graduating, he received an offer to work in the movie industry in Los Angeles as a motion graphic designer. Since then, he has worked on projects for Amazon Prime, ABC, Disney, Netflix, and Apple TV, just to name a few. Recently, he began a new journey as a fine artist, showcasing his artwork in galleries from Los Angeles to Jamaica. Our second panelist is Elliot Chang. Elliot is a designer with a focus on the intersection of social, gaming, and developer experiences. Elliot has a bachelor's degree in mathematics and economics and a minor in computer science from the University of Southern California as well as a master's degree in computer science from USC. His background in computer science and behavioral economics allows him to make intuitive, beautiful, and fun products. And he currently works as a product designer for Epic Games, which I believe is a recent shift for him. And we're super excited to be able to talk to both of them. But before we dive into our panel discussion, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and pass it over to our Certiport Corporate Event Manager, Dominique Delbar, to tell us a little bit more about the Adobe Championship. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Hannah. Let me get my screen pulled up. All right, let me know if you guys can see my screen. Looks great. Looks great, perfect. Well, I will be quick so we can get talking to Akil and Elliot. Uh, they are wonderful, so I'm really grateful that you guys are here and that you get a chance to learn from them and to ask them questions. Um, I'm here just to give you a little bit of background on the Adobe Student Competitions that we host each year. And so we have um, two major ones that we host. We have the U.S. National Championship, which is for our students within the U.S., and we have the World Championship. Um, and students from all over the world come together to compete at the World Championship. Uh, just a little bit of background. So the Adobe Certified Professional uh, Championships are about nine years old, and there are, just as there is national competition held in the U.S., there are national competitions held all over the world, uh, which is pretty incredible. However, each year, uh, the World Championship is held in the U.S. This next year, it's going to be in Orlando, Florida. Um, and these competitions attract media attention from all over the world. Um, just as there's national competitions happening all over the world, there's media outlets that are very invested in um, their candidates. And so it's a pretty cool opportunity to um, gain some exposure that way. And while at the, uh, the championships, uh, students get to create designs for real nonprofit clients which is pretty cool. This past year, the nonprofit client for our Adobe students was um, the Ocean Agency, and they are a creative agency that is dedicated to helping preserve our coral reefs. You can learn more about them in the Netflix documentary called Chasing Coral, but the students created posters for an upcoming uh, climate change conference that's being held in Egypt, and they did a great job. If you'd like to see some of the projects that they made, please send me an email and I'm happy to send you over a link. Um, but this next year, it'll be similar. Uh, students will get to create a project for a nonprofit client. Um, so the big question is, so how can I then get my students involved? How can they qualify? Um, and to participate in the competitions, students need to be between the ages of 13 and 22 years old, and they need to earn a passing score on one of the Adobe Certified Professional exams. So, Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign. So that's the first step. And then the next step is to submit an original design um, 
and the source files um, to uh, to compete in the uh, in the uh, in the competition. Um, and I can send a link out after this call so you can more easily submit those projects. But those are the two steps required. So they need to pass the certification exam, and then they also need to submit a project. After they submit their project, we have a panel of graphic designer judges and professionals who review their designs for complexity, for um, uh, a lot about a complexity, about the ability for them to, the students to use the, the software, things of that nature. And then the students will then be notified if they qualify. Um, and, oh, I, I totally jumped the gun. <laughs> so like I said, all projects will be reviewed by a panel of judges and then the students who have the best projects at the end of the qualification period will end, will receive an invitation to attend the US National Championship. And this year, this is a new thing. We're having two qualifiers for Adobe Certified Professional Students. In the past, we just had one, but moving forward, we will have two. So we have a fall qualifier, and a spring qualifier. So students are encouraged to submit projects um, and take certification exams during these given periods. And at the end of these periods, they will then be notified if they then qualified for the US National Championship. If a student submits in the fall, and does not earn an invitation, they can still submit in the spring to receive an invitation. So that's something to be aware of, uh, that they can continue to submit um, if they did not earn an invitation the first time. And just to note too, right now we're right in the middle where we're actually towards the end of the qualifier. So uh, be thinking about what types of projects you would have your students submit as the qualifier does end on December 16th. So it's coming up in about a month and a half. And then once students uh, receive the invitation, we celebrate, we're really excited. Uh, then they get to come to the US National Championship. And this year, the US National Championship will be held in Orlando, Florida, similar to the World Championship. And what the students get is they get a complimentary pass to the US National Championship, um, which includes things like food and activities. Um, all qualifiers, if, if your student qualifies and they're under 18, they have to bring a chaperone. However, that first chaperone is free. Um, and they also get to partake of all the fun activities and they get food. Any additional chaperone will cost a small fee, um, but we ask that everyone under 18 does bring a chaperone. Um, and then just another, another quick note. So while the conference is free to attend, uh, students are responsible to cover uh, their, their transportation costs to the, the actual event. Um, this year, we're going to have some scholarships available. So if your student qualifies, they can keep an eye open for that. Um, but this year, we're estimating the cost will be about $1,000 per student. Um, if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out. Oftentimes, I know that school districts help. They might have budgets available for that. So that's something to explore. Um, and like I said, uh, there is a travel scholarship that students can also apply apply to and um, we can help out that way. Um, while the US National Championship is being held, we also have our annual Certified Educators Conference. Um, and that's for educators to come together to learn more about how they can implement certification in the classroom and to innovate and support each other as they're seeking to um, better serve and help educate their students. Um, and all educators who have students qualify for the US National Championship, um, and they're also going to be the chaperone, they actually get a free, uh, a complimentary pass to attend certified, um, which is a pretty big deal. So you get to sit in all of those workshops, the breakout sessions, um, the keynote speakers. So it's a pretty good deal. So if you're interested in attending certified, um, have your students try to, to earn that invitation to the US National Championship. And like I mentioned, it's going to be held in, in Orlando, Florida this year. The dates are June 19th through the 22nd. Um, and when the students are at the, at the competition, I kind of talked about what the conference includes. But when they're actually testing um, and competing, we have a set structure that we like them to follow. So they will have eight hours to create a project that meets the, their client's prompt. So whatever the nonprofit client is. Um, and they'll have eight hours to, 
to meet whatever that prompt is requesting. And so it's it's a big deal. Sometimes, sometimes students come and they try to be as creative as possible, which is perfect, um, but it also has to meet those technical business requirements. So it's uh, trying to find a balance between the two. Um, students who would like to be successful at the US National Championships should really seek to understand how to use creative or project briefs, uh, graphic design vocabulary, and again, they should really seek to meet those clients' requirements. After they're done competing, of course, we have prizes. So we have a panel of judges, including the nonprofit client, um, representatives from Adobe and other graphic design professionals who will review all the projects that are submitted. And then um, the top three winners will be named. And this year, the prizes are actually bigger than ever, and we're very excited about it. So the first place uh, winner will re receive $3,000, second place $2,000, and third place $3,000. And all students who are in the top three will also receive an invitation, an all, exp all expenses paid invitation, might I add, to attend the World Championship. Um, the World Championship is, again, where all students from around the world, all of the other um, Adobe National Champions come together to compete. Um, and similar, it's a similar layout to the US National Championship. So they'll also have eight hours to create a project for a nonprofit client. They should maintain that knowledge that they had at the US National Championship. They really need to try to meet those clients' expectations. Um, and if they win at the World Championship, they'll get more cash prizes, which is great. So, and again, these are bigger than we've ever given out before. So very excited about that. But if they win, if they get first place, they will receive $8,000, second place $4,000, and third place $2,000, um, which is great. Um, all students, let me back up to this too, all students who attend both the U.S. National Championship and the World Championship also get free Wacom tablets to help them design while they're competing, but then they get to take them with them afterward. Uh, so that was a very quick high-level review of what the of what the competitions look like. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, and we'll also be sending a recap email after this and you can review the slides. Um, you can have my email address and I'll also send out the, the submitted project link. And I'm really excited, like I mentioned, that Elliot and Akil are both here to talk to you about their experiences at the competitions. Um, so you can learn more about how they can help serve uh, your students. Amazing, thanks, Dominique. <clears throat> Well, now is the time for us to get to know Elliot and Akil. So uh, Akil, we'll go ahead and start with you. And I know I gave a quick introduction into you and a little bit about your experience, but do you wanna tell us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, absolutely. Uh, first off, thank you so much for uh, inviting me here to speak. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, yes, so my name is Akil Dunkley, um, born and raised uh, in Jamaica and um, right when I was turning 18, I had the opportunity to migrate to Florida. So it was in Florida, um, you know, wrapping up high school, I learned about the, this uh, certification program. And my dad's a graphic designer. So growing up, I saw, you know, Mac computers and all, like Photoshop and all that kind of stuff from a young age. So it's piqued my interest then. And I was dabbling in it a little bit. So having an opportunity to be certified in it was a no brainer for me in high school. Uh, and then when getting certified, actually the first competition came about, the first ever competition came about in uh, 2013. And I ended up uh, getting uh, chosen to be one out of two uh, to represent America. So that was pretty, pretty that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. And, uh, my certification. Awesome. Thanks, Akil. Elliot, we'll go over to you as well. Do you want to give us a quick introduction into yourself and your experience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a little bit of background on myself. I got started uh, with design uh, in web development and graphic designs and then eventually into game development. Um, so early on, I was very much deepened more on like the STEM side of things. And early on, I hadn't really considered design much as a career option. 
Um, but I had been doing a student org in high school called Business Professionals of America, uh, and they happened to be giving out free certification uh, tests for the Adobe suite. Um, and since I was relatively familiar with Photoshop at that time, I decided to take that certification. Um, and that's how I found out about the championship. And then I applied for it and actually didn't get it the first two times. Uh, but then the third application, I was able to get into the program or uh, represent America for the national championship. Um, and that's where it sort of really shifted a lot of how I view design, especially in the context of careers, where before I always thought it was like just something I could dabble in, but there it was the first time that I was sort of in this environment where everyone was interested in art and design and they wanted to go deep on it long term. Um, and being in that environment was was really invigorating of just being able to see other young artists and designers made me realize like, hey, maybe this is something I can pursue. Um, and that's really shaped my career uh, up to this point. I love that. And I love that you both have such unique journeys. And I know we're going to uh, dive a lot more into that. But I wanted to go back to you, Elliot, and talk about you entered the competition multiple times. And I know one of the things that a lot of students have reservations about is putting their work out there. So how did you decide that you wanted to participate in the Adobe competition? How did you kind of gear yourself up for that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So at the time I was applying or I had been submitting to a like graphic design competition through Business Professionals America uh, and decided to double dip. So I applied for the Adobe Championship as well with that submission, um, but that submission didn't go through and it wasn't, it wasn't even that great of a, a design, but that's sort of how I got uh, acquainted with the application process. Mm. Uh, Hannah has always been really, really great with like helping out with that process. So the second year when I was doing some more like side projects, I decided to submit again um, and then similarly for the third year I applied again um, and just being able to know like hey like this is a safe space for you to sort of not even like showcase your work but at least get some eyeballs on it I think was a really really big part of my design journey of I've always been of the opinion that to get started is sort of just put whatever's on your mind get pen on paper and just like get eyeballs on it get some feedback and start the iterative process to get better at your craft. I love that. It, it Sometimes it takes putting something out there that ne isn't necessarily what you feel like is your best work, but being able to get people's constructive criticism and really put yourself out there, I think that's a huge part of perfecting your craft. So I love that. Absolutely. Akil, um, I wanted to ask you, I know you competed in the very first year that we ever had the Adobe Championship. So tell us what that looked like for you. How did you decide that you wanted to compete? Uh, yeah, um, I was. I remember the summer when I got a call from uh, John Medved. Uh, I even remember his name. <laughs> um, it's pr pretty awesome um, getting that call, and um, it was a situation for me where I I didn't really see or or I didn't really see a way of all right this is a path I could take mm. to make art um uh like a full-time thing you know to be sustainable off art I didn't see it and growing up in Jamaica like it's more traditional sense like oh you have to do this kind of job and art is kind of just a hobby so getting that call and having the opportunity to have my dad and I go out to Washington DC in the name of art that was pretty huge and when I got there, it was even more mind blowing to see other um, kids and other artists and students um, with the same passion as I did. Mm -hmm. And um, just getting experience from uh, uh, real world professionals. Uh, again, it was amazing. I, I got so inspired that whole time I was there. And then months after, you know, the competition, um, and yeah, that's, that's how it kind of started for me. It was a spark that I, I needed. And it was almost like proof to my parents, like, Hey, see, you know, mm -hmm. art can, can be a, uh, something sustainable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, I wanted to ask, you've kind of touched on a couple different points, but what was your favorite part of coming to compete? Um, definitely would be being around other artists and being in that environment and, and just creating and having just that collective energy that was there. 
and mm -hmm. learning from other professionals as well. Um, definitely, just the, just that energy that was felt being around with uh, other passionate people. Yeah, I think there's a lot. Every time I go to the competition, I've been working for Certiport for about nine years. It's amazing the creativity and the connection that students have as soon as they come. It They don't need to know each other. They don't even need to speak the same language. There's just that instant connection for the passion that you guys share for design, which I think is super special. Um, Elliot, same question for you. You competed, I think, in 2016. Is that right? Or uh, I first applied in 2016, but uh, I competed okay. for 20 years. <laughs> okay, awesome. So tell us what your favorite part was of the competition and competing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I would say my favorite part was also meeting the other people, but uh, I don't want to like double dip there. <laughs> so I, I would say um, the, the actual competition itself of like sitting down in that room for eight hours with everyone else of like, there is a certain energy of just like everyone being really, really focused, honing in on their craft, seeing just what actually comes out of that room was really, really cool of mm. being able to see everyone's output and seeing just like, hey, everyone was given the same material. Everyone was given the same eight hours, but everyone also came out with their own distinct flavor of solution. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that was really, really cool. Yeah, it's amazing, especially considering the age demographic. I mean, you both competed when you were 18, you know, in the middle of high school. I just think that it's so special to see in eight hours what you guys are able to create. It's, it's a really amazing environment. And I know that it, it opens our eyes to be able to see the power that certification and these skills really have in the lives of these of these students. And I wanted to kind of dive back into certification and partnering that with the competition. You guys both competed when you were recently graduated or still in high school. Um, and I know that a lot has changed since then. You guys have both graduated from college. A lot of things have changed even in your career. So how would you guys say, we'll start with you, Elliot. How has certification in the competition helped you achieve the career goals and gotten you to where you are today? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so one of my first jobs out of high school uh, when I started uh, college was with this startup called Focus, where they were doing like mentorship for startups. Um, and initially, I was able to go in there to just hit the ground running with helping out with both graphic design work as well as website design work, uh, primarily because of that, like the confidence that the competition and the certification process mm -hmm. had instilled in of being able to go there and know that like, hey, even though I'm still relatively young, knowing that like I'm able to compete at the same level as what the other like applicants were competing at uh, really helped me with feeling like, hey, I should be able to come in here and just hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to have that sense of confidence was definitely a really, really big booster. And then from there, I think one of the hardest parts with like design and art is just getting that first job. But once you get that first one, you can really start snowballing it. Um, so I think the certification, without it, I don't think I would have been able to really get that type of momentum to get the snowball going. Well, and you, you have a unique career path because I think a lot of people associate design skills with uh, graphic design or similar to Akil's career as an, an artist and motion graphics artist. So how did you decide that you wanted to pursue the computer science and the product design side of things? Yeah, yeah. So at the time when I first entered college, I was focused on computer science and I had pre previously been working in a lot of just like web development, game development type settings. Uh, but when I first started working in like the corporate workforce, what I realized pretty early on was especially in a corporate type setting, development work, you don't really get the same sense of creative wiggle room as you do with yeah. personal projects. But the design side, there's still a lot of creative wiggle room to be had. Um, so I decided to pivot my career early on of instead of focusing on the development side of tech, focusing on the design side. Uh, and within that, there's UI UX, there's research, there's a lot to be done within product design as a whole, where it's, you're using both the like, the mindset of a designer, but also the mindset of a technologist and using that combination to create designs. I think that's really special that you were able to have the intersection of both of those skill sets. There's not a lot of people who can bring that to the table. So what an amazing balance of the left and right brain, right? To bring that into your career. I think that's awesome. Well, <laughs> yeah. Akil, I wanna go over to you as well. Tell us how certification and the competition has brought you to where you are today. Uh, yeah, Elliot, you, you mentioned it um, as well, that boost of confidence, definitely, you know, um, competing, 
um, seeing, uh, you know, that being a realization like, okay, I'm here for a reason and, you know, I must be doing something good, something right. And um, that burst of energy you get afterwards to say, all right, I competed at this level so I could find other goals, obstacles and, and knock them out uh, to achieve those goals. And uh, another one is that certification, you know, on, a, on the resume that that's powerful because I use it as leverage in if, if, if I'm in like a, a job interview um, and not necessarily bringing it, bringing it up in the interview, but it's something that it's a powerful addition to a resume mm. because they'll see that you took the time to get certified in a skill set that they'll need. And it also boosts you up at, in terms of, okay, this is a skillful person that I could put my trust in uh, as an employer, them looking at you mm -hmm. um, uh, as a potential uh, hire. It's, it's something that they could say, okay, this person, you know, took that extra step and, um, and the leverage that I have in those meetings is say, okay, you know, I'm certified in this skill set that you need. So um, maybe we can no negotiate for a higher pay or something like that. So I, I've definitely, um, I definitely don't hesitate anytime I'm up. Anytime I've updated my resume throughout the years, it's always on it. It's, it's, it's probably, not probably, it is the first thing on my resume in order of the um, timeline. So that's the first thing that they see in terms yeah. of like awards. And it's, it's a pretty powerful thing to be, to, to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. To have Adobe's stamp of approval on your resume. That, Absolutely. That's a lot. Yeah. And I know that a lot of opportunities have opened up for you. I mean, outside of your career, we talked um, in some of our side calls that we've had about your recent experience being able to showcase your art back home in Jamaica. So I wanted to make sure that we talked about that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's an opportunity that was over eight years in the making. Mm -hmm. um, I dabbled in a lot throughout my career. And, you know, I went from graphic design to photography, then to learning digital art through programs uh, like 3D softwares and um, now motion graphics. And um, I wanted to find a way to incorporate my culture in it. You know, I, I migrated in 2010 and I haven't been back in a while back then. And uh, I just was very, I was homesick in a way and just missing culture. And um, it, it's Jamaica's 60th year of independence this year. So last year I started planning, all right, I want to do an art show. And um, taking a step back a little bit, um, I in the bio that you read, um, me spending that time in an art gallery setting as an art gallery manager, um, I, saw, I saw another world of art, you know, showcasing in um, galleries and all that. And I wanted to fuse, you know, fine art with Jamaican culture and all the skill sets that I, I gathered over these years allowed me to put on a solo show. And mm -hmm. I went back to Jamaica this summer and the show was phenomenal. Um, it was packed all night. It was a two week show. And uh, it was just something that I was really happy to put on for Jamaica because all the work were Jamaica themed. Um, so people really came in and enjoyed seeing um, uh, um, Jamaican uh, themed work, that, you know, that just ex exudes uh, culture. Yeah. And uh, that was very, very important for me. Yeah, what a special opportunity. I mean, outside of your typical corporate job to be able to share your skills and use that to breathe life into a culture that you feel so passionate about. So I think that's really special. And Elliot, I wanted to talk to you as well. I know you've had some amazing corporate opportunities, but what additional opportunities do you feel like have opened up to you because of your Adobe certification? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So for me, a lot of it has been within the realms of gaming of uh, initially when I applied for the Adobe competition, a lot of the submissions I had done were like my early game designs. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to sort of break into the game industry because of that. Um, previously at a company called Skills, where uh, my job was mainly focused on the developer experience of 
being able to know both from a like design perspective what game designers need as well as from like a development perspective of what like game developers go through being able to combine those two has been really really big um and then recently i just got started at uh, epic games um has just started gotten ramping up on it uh but i would say during like the interview process, I brought up the Adobe competition and just like the uh, the certifications. Um, so up to this point, uh, even the, a lot of those certification uh, like processes have helped out with with job interviews. I love that you guys are six, you know, five to ten years past the competition, but we're still it's still something that comes up in interviews, and I think that speaks a lot to the value that you guys have placed on this experience and, and how it's impacted you. And I know that it can do the same for a lot of other students. And it's something to you, the point that we discussed earlier that a lot of students might not feel comfortable sharing their work or putting their work out there because they feel like they're not ready, they're not necessarily prepared or they're not confident in, in the work that they've done. So I wanted to give you both an opportunity to share what advice you have for other students who are looking to compete in the Adobe Championship. So Elliot, we'll go ahead and start with you. Yeah, yeah. For me, I would say the biggest thing is just getting pen on paper, just really getting your thoughts out there. Of, I think for me, early on, a lot of my work wasn't really all that great looking back on it, um, but it was going through that process of, I think early on, what brings value from like competitions is that it gives you a goal in mind. Whereas mm -hmm. like when you're working on projects on your own, there isn't really like an end goal or like some sort of milestone to like define like success. Um, so having that competition as sort of that thing for you to strive for, I think is really, really important where even if you don't get in that first time or that second time, I feel like being able to get more uh, at bats for your designs, I think is really, really important, especially early on. So how did you polish and kind of hone your craft over the years as you were applying for the competition? Yeah, I, I, would, I get a lot of sort of feedback from just both friends and family mm -hmm. mentors of just seeing like, hey, this is what my submission was last year. It didn't really work out. What are things I can improve on? Of I think design and art is 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 definitely an iterative process, especially for like the digital age, as you can refine and revisit a lot of your previous works. Of some of the games that I was designing for back in like 2016, every couple of years I look back and say like, hey, at the core of it, the the game mechanics of that actually did work out, but maybe the visuals didn't. Maybe I can iterate on this. Maybe I can like update it and sort of move and it grow as a designer from there. Well, and how, how awesome to be able to expand your portfolio, right? I think a, a huge part of art is that collaborative effort of saying, what do you feel like works? What do you feel like doesn't work? And so being able to uh, bridge that gap into your point in the digital age, it's easy to be able to iterate and make it different every time. So I think that's that's super powerful. I love that. Akil, what about you? What advice would you share with um, the students and educators who are listening? Yeah, um... I'd say, um, you know, don't be afraid to try and fail and try and fail. And that's, that, that's, that's how we learn, you know, that's how we, we learn on what doesn't work or what works. Uh, and, you know, a few, few pointers is definitely do research and see what has won in previous competitions or, <laughs> or what may have been submitted before. Um, I mean, even in the, the commercial industry I'm in, we do a lot of background research first before anything starts running, you know, um, just so we're familiar with what world we're getting ourselves into. Mm -hmm. And another thing, too, is don't add any added pressure by doing it last minute or, or practicing last minute. Give, give some time, space things out. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, don't be afraid to take chances. And if you have to have 10 different versions of one thing because you want to try things out, that's when you start getting into the nitty gritty of, you know, exploring design and shapes and lines and, and, and formations and all of that. So, you know, yeah, just give yourself time. Um, don't rush it. And, you know, just like Elliot, he tried multiple times and he, and he got it. So, you know, don't be too discouraged because you know, just got to keep pushing and you never know, you, you might be, you, you might get called and if not, keep trying again. I love that. I think you guys both are examples of the power of persistence and the power of dedication to your craft. And you've both been able to do such amazing things. And it really speaks a lot to 
the strength that you have in your character, but also the power of the knowledge that you've gained from teachers and from fellow professionals and from the certification. So I'm really glad that we got to sit down with both of you and, and chat about this. Um, before we wrap up, I just wanted to see if you had any final thoughts that you wanted to share. Anything that I didn't touch on that you think is important for us to talk about. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, sure, I'll um, jump in real quick. Um, so the importance of flow, um, sometimes it's often not said or, or even researched into. So I just wanted to, you know, give a little life hack. Um, so basically getting in the state of flow is when someone is laser focused on whatever they're doing and the time passes by, the time almost stops. Or, or freezes and you zone out and go into the state of flow. So to create good art or create good design is when your skill level is to a point where when you get into that flow, you can create amazing things because you don't have to stop and watch a tutorial or have to yeah. stop and figure out something. So to get your skill level up, it takes practice, it takes trial and error. And then the flow comes when you can have an environment where you could just zone out and be in maximum focus. So find out ways where you can marry the two. It's going to take time because, you know, it takes time to get your skill level up. Yeah. But I promise you, it's just like a jazz player improv doing imp improv. It's the same thing with making art. So pay attention to those opportunities um, of getting yourself into that flow and that zone where you could make things that you, you never sometimes you the end result is something you didn't even know you you had in you but you get in that zone and you just go am i the only one i hope i'm not the only one who's thinking of the movie soul are you are you referencing soul from disney that i just feel like is the perfect That's a great example movie. of that yeah yeah it's the ability to have your skills almost exist outside of yourself that you're able to create something that you just never thought possible and to your point I think you have to build up enough skill set enough practice so that your skills can kind of go on their own you don't need to stop you don't need to watch a tutorial you right, need to right. have the technology kind of hinder your progress it's just a tool for you to be able to use that creativity so I think that's that's amazing Elliot any final thoughts from you yeah, yeah, I would say on that, I think what has helped me a lot with getting into that flow state has been trying to sort of focus in on what my interests are. I think art isn't a siloed thing. It's it's a multidisciplinary thing. And for me, I found that through gaming and computer science and that intersection with design. And I think what's nice is this feeling of almost emergent properties when you collect all of your different disciplines and you try to combine it and try to find things that don't exist in the individual silos of those disciplines, but in combination almost transcends any one of those disciplines. Um, so I think for me, I would say try to find out what those disciplines are for you, try to see what resonates most for you and try to incorporate that into your art. Because I found that that is sort of the best way to approach getting into that flow state. And I think that not everyone realizes how pervasive design is and how pervasive art is and it's a part of our everyday life so being able to take that inspiration in combination with Akil's comment about the skills right being able to use that inspiration and those skills together to create something super magnificent and we know that you've both done that and we've both been privileged to be able to be witnesses to that process and your amazing progress and we're grateful that we got to spend some time with you this afternoon. So thank you, Elliot. Thank you, Akil, for sharing your expertise and your knowledge and your experience with us. We're so grateful that you got to uh, share some of your advice with our fellow educators and our fellow students. Um, for those who are listening, we just want to make sure that you're aware, of course, this is our final Adobe Certified Professional Academy session for the year. Um, but we have other sessions that are available on our YouTube page. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and drop the link into the chat. So for those who haven't been able to attend those other sessions, we recommend trying to catch the recap of those. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. Um, we actually encourage that. So we'll be sending out the link to the recording. Please feel free to respond back if you have any questions about the competition to Dominique's comment earlier. 
you're more than welcome to touch base with us and we're happy to help out however we can. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Akil. Thank you, Elia and Dominique. Hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you, everyone. everyone. Bye.